Hello, in this video I'm going to paint a sunrise over the snowy mountains. Very dramatic uh, cloud formation you can see there with a lot of pink and purple over a sunlit horizon. So there's a lot of wet and wet in here, some wet and dry and a bit of dry brush. I will talk through uh, some of the compositional choices I've made. I, I am painting off a reference photo but I have made some minor adjustments to it but it's not as difficult as it may look. It's a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy this one and I look forward to your questions and comments. Thanks for watching in advance. First I'm going to wet the paper with clean water. I do that for those paintings where I'm going to use a lot of wet and wet and that's just for that bit of sunlight there on the horizon just below the clouds. And then I'm adding some cerulean blue for that little bit of blue sky that's peeking out there underneath the clouds. And that's actually quite an important part of this sky. Quinacridone rose as my pink color and then just warmed it up a little bit with yellow. And because the paper is lovely and wet, actually it's damp, it's not wet. I used a sponge to take off some of the excess water so I can now just loosely brush in that pink color. Now because the paint obviously dries a lot lighter in the end I decided to go in with some stronger colors for the pink part of the clouds and added a bit of warmth with my cadmium red light and the quinacridone rose, uh, a tiny bit of yellow in there and then add a darker red pink once i think i've done enough i'll move on to the rest of the painting before the bottom part of the paper dries out completely so for the snow i'm going to mix a light version of that same pink and a bit cooler at the bottom because snow is white but it really reflects whatever color is in the sky so if it's a blue sky the snow will be bluish purplish and in this instance with the strong pink and purple colors in the sky I want to reflect that in the snow literally. There's a road there so I hint at some tracks and we're still in the first wash, we're still in the wet stage so those will fuzz out a lot and become just tonal shifts in the first layer which we can then strengthen up with some dry brush once that first wash has completely dried. This being a sunrise painting, there is not a lot of sunlight in the sky yet. The colors are very cool. It's a shadowy morning, the sun just peeking over the horizon. So this is why I'm now adding a second layer of the shadow color over the top of that first wash, just so that I can have that first wash shine through that darker layer and create some highlights. I didn't paint those hills. The light of the first wash is basically my background mountain, is where the sun hits that distant hill or mountain, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm just going to add some lines and dots and squiggles to create the illusion of uh, lines of trees and I'm taking my time on doing that. I really enjoy this process. Like I'm in no rush to complete this stage. We're working with wet paint on dry paper so I don't have to worry about time too much. And I just want to make sure that every brush stroke is in the right spot. And want to paint a couple of houses that I can see behind those trees. Now you can't see those trees just yet, they're going to go over the top of the houses but first I want to draw those two roofs in there so that I don't have to try and paint them in later once I've done the foreground trees. So a couple of roofs is all it really takes and again I'm taking my time, I want to make sure they're square, they've got straight lines. And this tree line here is closer than the one that we painted all the way in the back. This is the middle ground. So I want this to be quite contrasty. Also there's not a lot of light in this 
picture because it's still early morning, so things are quite dark, especially trees. They're almost a silhouette. So I don't want to paint a lot of detail. I just want to create the tones and the values. Now I'm going to speed this up a bit because you can tell what I'm doing. I'm just dipping my brush back into that mix and top it up where I need to and then create those middle and foreground trees with this relatively dark value. And now I'm going to paint some trees around those houses. And because those trees are a little bit darker, the roofs and the houses will still be recognizable even when I'm finished. I think I've amped up my value even further as we get closer to our camera. And now I'm coming to the final stages of this painting. I just want to create a bit more interest in the foreground. So I've um, come back to my shadow mix, which is just you know a blue purple color, not quite as dark as the trees. And speaking of inventing things, I've decided to pop in a figure. There is one in the photo, but it's very, very hard to see. Um, but I'm going to place my figure in a slightly different spot, just next to the focal point, which is where the road disappears into the far distance. That's kind of where I'm looking at. So I just want to have a person walking towards that point. So we want to follow that person into the distance. Where is he going or she? What are they doing? So I've added a few um, posts to the side there and a few footsteps in the snow that just guides the perspective and the eye and kind of creates a line exactly where we want the viewer to focus on, which is on the person and just beyond the person. And I'm going to leave it there. So I take the tape off and here we go, a sunrise in the snow. Thanks for watching.